Thanks to TuneMy Music for sponsoring this video, but more on them later. So, I've been using Spotify for over 10 years now, and it's not because I think it's necessarily the best streaming service ever, but because it works really well for my needs. It has all the songs I listen to, I'm used to the interface, and it works great across all my devices. But ever since I started covering audio products, I'll admit, I've been enticed by other streaming services like Apple Music, which claim to offer more features than Spotify, but at a lower monthly cost than Spotify. So with that, I decided to make this video to take a closer look at both Apple Music and Spotify from four different angles content, search and recommendation algorithms, sound quality, and value for money. And this is all to answer a few questions. Which is the better streaming service? And on a more personal level, is it time for me to finally switch to Apple Music or should I just stick with Spotify? Stay tuned to find out. But before I continue, I would love it if you guys would like the video, subscribe, and let us know in the comments what you would like to see next. All right, first let's talk about content. Who has more songs? Well, years ago, the answer was pretty cut and dry. It was Apple Music, which claimed to have over 100 million songs in its catalog. But things are different now. In 2024, both Apple Music and Spotify claim to have over 100 million songs on their platforms, and the number just continues to grow every year. Now, to put 100 million songs into perspective, it would take you 571 years of back-to-back -back listening in order to actually listen to all the songs, assuming each track was just three minutes, which we know is not the case. There are some songs that are over three minutes or under three minutes. You're not gonna listen to all of them in this lifetime. That's all I'm saying. Now with over 100 million songs on both platforms, it basically means that no matter which streaming service you choose, you're gonna find the songs you want to listen to. And this also means that if you ever wanna switch from Spotify to Apple Music or vice versa, transferring your entire music collection from one service to the other is gonna be a breeze, especially if you use a service like Tune My Music, which is designed for people who wanna hop from one platform to the other, or if you're like me and you just use multiple streaming services at the same time. So let's say by the end of this video, I have decided to move on from Spotify to Apple Music. All I need to do to transfer my playlist is go to tunemymusic.com and click to get started. Then I'll select Spotify as my source, load my playlist from Spotify, select the playlist I want to transfer over, then press choose destination. I'll then select Apple Music, then I'll hit start transfer. And then Tune My Music's matching technology will then work to match songs across your source and destination platforms. A few minutes later, my entire music collection from Spotify is now in my Apple Music account. Besides transferring playlists, Tune My Music also allows you to share your tracks, playlists, and music library with friends and family, even if they're using a different music service. And you can also use Tune My Music to back up your music library and sync all your playlists across different streaming devices to make sure that your carefully curated music collection is always available to you, regardless of whether or not you're using what, Apple Music, Tidal, Spotify, whatever platform you're using. Now, if you're interested in trying out Tune My Music, you can start using it today for free by using the link in the description below. Okay, so besides music, what else does Spotify and Apple Music offer? Well, in addition to the 100 million songs, Spotify offers over 6 million podcasts and over 250,000 audiobooks. On the other hand, Apple Music offers radio stations with a large collection of live and on-demand programs that you can tune into. So it's clear, both Apple Music and Spotify are pretty much tied when it comes to music content. However, which you ultimately choose will depend on your listening preferences. If you are into audiobooks, podcasts, and music, then go with Spotify. However, if you're all in or only in for the music, then you may enjoy the myriad of tracks and radio programs with Apple Music. Okay, now moving on, both Spotify and Apple Music have come a long way in terms of how easy it is to find your favorite songs or just discover new tracks. However, it is clear that Spotify had a head start. If you go into Spotify today, there are many ways to find new tracks and quickly access your favorites. For example, the For You page is neatly laid out and displays your most recently played playlists and albums, and scrolling down shows the latest releases from the artists you follow, as well as recommendations for new and old songs, podcasts, and audiobooks. On top of that, Spotify also comes with some playlists that are automatically generated based on your listening preferences. For example, the classic Discover Weekly is a playlist that updates every week with new songs that the platform thinks you're gonna like. And it's all based on the kind of songs you were listening to in the week before. Meanwhile, the Daylist automatically presents you with new and old songs that you might like based on what you listen to at different times of the day. For example, I usually go to the gym after work, so when 6 p.m. rolls around, my Daylist changes to something like Ibiza 180 BPM Friday evening. Interesting, but yeah, that tracks. But wait! 
Dish Blop. Earlier this year, Spotify rolled out a beta version of its AI playlists in the UK and Australia. And this feature lets you create playlists based on prompts you enter on a chat GPT-like interface. Now, I wish that would come to Canada and the United States real soon because, yeah, the feature looks pretty cool. Yeah, I think a lot of people would have fun making playlists that way. Now, if you don't want to deal with playlists altogether, then you can always use Spotify's DJ X feature, which is an AI-powered DJ that will queue up your favorite traps. Traps, nice. And if you don't want to deal with creating playlists at all, you could always use Spotify's DJ X feature, which is an AI powered DJ that will queue up your favorite tracks as well as throw in some new songs to add variety. And if you don't want to deal with AI anything, then you can just simply check out the myriad of playlists curated by the Spotify team. Also, if you do have a song in mind, but you don't know the title, you could always type the lyrics of a song in the search bar and you'll be presented with the song you were looking for. And that's pretty neat, honestly. Now looking on the other side of things, Apple Music does a decent job in helping you find new and old songs. Just like Spotify, the Listen Now tab on Apple Music gives you quick access to your recently played tracks as well as other songs you might like. Apple Music also lets you create what they call stations, which kind of like a radio station, is essentially just an endless queue of music that is selected based on what you listen to. So for example, if you're listening to, I don't know, Baby Shark, you could create a station that queues up an endless number of tracks that are like Baby Shark, if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> I don't know, to each their own, no judge. With Apple Music, you'll also get something called Discovery Station, which is essentially the radio version of Spotify's Discover Weekly playlist. It's essentially a curated radio station or an endless queue of songs that you probably haven't heard before, but you probably might like because the songs were picked based on your listening habits. Speaking of things that are similar, Apple Music also features the same search by lyric feature. So if you don't know the title of a song that's stuck in your head, just type out the lyrics and Apple Music will find it for you. And of course, like Spotify, Apple Music also houses many curated playlists based on different genres for you to choose from. Finding new songs on Apple Music is more than possible. However, it's clear that based on everything I just said, Apple Music does fall behind a bit in regards to how you can find new songs. Spotify has just been in the music streaming game longer than Apple, and Spotify has always been much quicker than Apple in adding discovery features, especially with eye-catching tricks like Daylist, DJX, and the beta AI playlist feature. I'd say searching for songs, that's pretty straightforward. Both platforms are pretty much tied there, but when it comes to discovering new music, I gotta give the W to Spotify here. Okay, moving on from recommendations, let's take a look at streaming quality. For years now, Spotify has been consistent with its streaming quality, delivering audio streams of up to 320 kilobits per second using the AAC and OGG Vorbis codec. Now, this actually has a few advantages. For one, the lower data rates mean that it shouldn't cost much to stream music when you're on data, and it also saves you on drive space, meaning that you can load a bunch of songs on your device without ever really having to worry about running out of storage. On top of that, I really like that Spotify includes a built-in equalizer in the app for iOS, especially since iOS doesn't have one built into the software. This means that with Spotify on iOS, you can really dial in your listening experience to your taste. Unfortunately, an equalizer and the 320 kilobits per second data rate is just not up to par with today's standards. And I gotta say, Apple Music blows Spotify out of the water when it comes to streaming quality. With Apple Music, you can stream lossless 24-bit 192 kilohertz audio files, which is much higher quality than what is offered on Spotify. And to add more salt in Spotify's wounds, Apple Music also supports spatial audio with Dolby Atmos, with Apple Music's library containing lots of Dolby Atmos tracks from your favorite artists. Meanwhile, Spotify, for as long as it's been in the music industry, has yet to support lossless or any form of spatial audio. Uh, we, we don't do that here. Okay, putting spatial audio aside for a sec, I am by no means trying to trash on Spotify here. Because at the end of the day, can you really hear a big difference between the lossless audio from Apple Music versus the lossy compressed audio from Spotify? Probably not. And this is especially true if you're like me and you mostly listen to music on Bluetooth headphones. There are bandwidth limitations when you are streaming audio wirelessly through Bluetooth. Now you might be able to hear a difference if you're using a wired connection or if you're using a Snapdragon sound equipped phone and pair of headphones. But even then, the difference is gonna be quite minute and you probably need a pair of trained ears in order to find any noticeable difference. And honestly, the fact that most people can't hear the difference between lossy versus lossless audio is probably the reason why Spotify has yet to offer support for lossless audio. Most people aren't probably gonna hear the difference, 
and it also costs more to host and stream high quality audio files. But then again, the question in this part of the video is which service offers higher quality audio streams? Well, the answer is Apple Music by a long shot. So if you find yourself listening mainly on a wired connection or you have the appropriate hardware to actually take advantage of the lossless audio files or you just like listening to songs with spatial audio, then yeah, you'll probably appreciate the higher quality options offered by Apple Music. However, I gotta say most people are probably gonna be fine with how your music sounds on Spotify. Again, you're probably not gonna hear the difference between lossy versus lossless. And that's why Spotify has been so popular for so long. It's fine, it'll get the job done. Trust me, I'm a sound guy. Finally, let's take a look at pricing. Both Apple Music and Spotify are pretty much the same when it comes to monthly cost. Although Spotify's individual and family plans do cost more than on Apple Music. However, both do offer a nice discounted plan for students at $5.99. Oh, to be a student with all those discounts. Spotify does offer a unique duo plan for couples at $16.99, which could save couples some cash. But then again, you could also just get an Apple Music Family subscription for $16.99, so the same price. And they can just split the cost between you, your partner, and the rest of your family, or between you and a few friends, up to six people on Apple Music. It's also worth pointing out that for less than the cost of a Spotify subscription, Apple Music does technically offer more value, especially when it comes to audio quality, including lossless audio and spatial audio with Dolby Atmos. Then again, you could also just justify Spotify's slightly higher price tag thanks to the platform's great music discovery features, as well as all the podcasts and audiobooks that are available on the platform, which does add some diversity to the content library. And it's also worth noting that Spotify offers a free plan, albeit with some limitations, whereas Apple Music has no free option at all. You can get free trial that ranges between one month to six months, maybe if you buy an Apple product, but then after that, you gotta go all in on a subscription. No free plan. So taking everything into account, content, search and discovery, streaming quality and price, which is the better streaming service? And am I gonna switch to the other side? Well, if you really care about audio quality, music content, and you really like the idea of radio programs or radio stations, then Apple Music offers a great value and it's also technically less expensive than Spotify. I especially like the fact that lossless audio and Dolby Atmos is included with a subscription without an additional charge, like what Tidal used to do. However, I still think that Spotify offers a decent value today, even if it lacks lossless audio and spatial audio, and even though it is technically a dollar more expensive for the individual plan compared to Apple Music. But like I've said before, Spotify's discovery features are head and shoulders above what's available on Apple Music, and I personally rely heavily on features like Daylist and Discover Weekly to find new music, and I kind of enjoy DJX from time to time too. Plus, if you're a podcast buff or you just want to change it up and read an audiobook, then Spotify has that and Apple Music does not. So based on my research here, I don't think I'm quite ready to move to Apple Music just because Spotify's discovery features are so, so good and because I use them so, so often. But if Apple Music really ups their recommendation game in the next few months, at least to the level of what Spotify has, then yeah, maybe I could see myself switching platforms in the near future. But it's clear, both Apple Music and Spotify do what they're designed to do. They help you find your favorites and help you find new music and they both do an excellent job. And ultimately, which platform you go with is gonna depend on what features you prioritize. For me, I just, again, I just really like those discovery features, so I'm gonna be sticking with Spotify. There is no wrong choice, because the right choice is the platform that is right for your needs. As cliche as that sounds. Put that on a t-shirt. Now, if you're curious about how Spotify compares to another popular streaming service, then make sure to check out our Tidal versus Spotify video right here. Thanks again to Tune My Music for sponsoring this video, and remember that you can try the service out for yourself for free by using our link in the description below. Until next time, happy listening.